Thomas, really good accounting question. Because if you want to be a successful composer, you have to be an absolutely brilliant accountant. And so um, making sure that your, uh, your administration is 100% in check with all your Cubase sessions, the music editor knows, the director knows, the picture editor knows, everybody knows what is what and where is it. So the Q numbering, let's start with the basics. The number before the M usually refers to the reel in which uh, a scene takes place. Um, the division of reels really comes from the old school day, uh, days where uh, one uh, roll of picture could not really go above 14, 15 or 16 minutes, um, depending on the frame rate, obviously. Um, and so that if you wanted to release a three hour film, you basically had to glue uh, three times three, uh, roughly, nine reels together to have like a full length film. And in these old school theaters, you would have an operator that had two cameras of which one spool was running. And then when the time was there, he would start the second one and clock change the lenses and the audience in the theater wouldn't even know that we switched from one camera to the other. So that's where the numbering before the M comes from. So one stands for a scene in real one, eight stands for a scene in real eight. And then M, I actually don't even know what it stands for. Music Q, music. Uh, I have to look that up. <laughs> I honestly don't know. But the number that comes after the M is the Q number in the movie. So 1M1, it's the first Q. 1M12 is the 12th Q. And what would be the first Q in real two? It's not going to be 2M1. It's going to be 2M13. So we keep the, the numbering keeps going up and the reel in front says where it is. So 2M23 is music cue 23 in reel number two. So that tells you 15 minutes plus 15, probably 25, 22 minutes into the film. 8M69 is Q number 69 in reel number eight. So we already know that there's eight reels. So at least uh, we're now eight times 15. So at least 90 plus minutes into the film. So that's a quick uh, reminder for that. Um, then um, from that point on, it all comes down to what you agree on. So for instance, <coughs> we make, let this happens all the time, right? So we have 1M15 and 1M16. Okay, there's a Q 1M15, there's a Q 1M16. As the music, as the film is getting edited, there's now space between 1M15 and 1M16 that needs to be filled with music. There's two things you can do. You can take 1M15 and extend it. You can take 1M16 and start it earlier. But if the extension of the film means that the piece of music that is missing is actually a completely new musical idea, a new musical concept that neither fits 1M15 or fits 1M16, you're going to do something new there. So how do we fix that with the Q numbers? Very simple. What used to be 1M15 becomes 1M15A and the new piece of music that you're making becomes 1M15B. But the moment you make that decision, everybody needs to know that you're going to be doing that. So the picture editor, the music editor, it needs to show up on the documents. <clears throat> Your session that used to be called 1M15 needs to be relabeled immediately as 1M15A. The picture session where there's a marker 1M15 needs to be renamed 1M15A. And you need to do it immediately while you're on it because you will forget it in six weeks and everybody gets confused what is what. Okay, so that is that. Now, revision, alternatives, you name it. So let's stick with this example. 1M15 is um, version, music version number 
2.3, okay? So 1M15 version 2.3, that's where I am. Now we're splitting this up in A and B, and B becomes something new. Now I'm gonna call the old queue 2M15A version 2.3, right? If I do any changes to that thing, it will go up. So 2M15A 2.4, right? The 2M15B queue that has never been written will have version 1.0 because it's new, it's right there. If there's new versions coming on that, it will number up 1.1, 1.2, and it goes up and it turns into 2 point something, 3 point something, 4 point something. It goes all the way up. It can get totally out of control. Some of the queues on Justice League actually have version 29.198. <laughs> so that tells you how many revisions and versions I did of one queue. <clears throat> Personally, I'm really uh, a big fan of really long queues. And for people that have heard the soundtrack on Justice League, you, you'll find out there are queues there that are up to 14, 15 minutes. Because once I'm writing, I, I'd rather just keep going instead of like a chunk of a minute here, a chunk of a minute, a chunk of a minute. The, um, the pros and cons of doing that are the following. Pro, you will write way more uh, consistent music over a period of 50 minutes instead of like simple ideas that need to be played together. The big con is your session is getting so huge, <laughs> you know, not only in length, but also in track counts. But if your computer can handle it, if you have enough DSP, go for the long cues. It will make you a better composer. One of the reasons why a lot of these classic film scores sound so cohesive and so like one piece, because they wrote them on paper. They, they, they didn't have to deal with Cubase sessions with DSP limits. And maybe they had to turn the page to keep writing, but that was not going to stop them from writing really consistent music. Um, and the last thing is the alternatives. Um, let's stick to the example that we have. So out of the top of my head, we were at 2M15 version 2.13. Okay, that's where we were. And now the director is saying, hmm, can you give me an alt? because I like what you have, but can we, do, can we uh, do an alternative? And sometimes you would keep developing the alternatives. The same thing happens from this point forward. The 2M15A version 2.3, or th 13. Uh, so the 2.13 version will stay the same in name, and it will go up to 2.14, 2.15, 2.16. You do want to make a note to yourself that from point version 2.13, you started developing an alternative at the same time. So from that point forward, two branches are being developed. So it's always good to note to self. When you create an alternative queue, you're going to call it 2M15 Alt 1 version 2.13, you're gonna start at 2.13, which is basically a reminder that that was the version number of the other one when you decided to branch the tree and go into different directions. Um, then the Alt 1 is also gonna be called version 2.13 and it numbers up, numbers up. In the worst case scenario, like I had on some movies, I had four different alts for the same queue. And so you have to really make sure the picture editor, the music editor, your Cubase sessions, and everybody else you're working with is aware that there are multiple alternatives for this same piece of music. So what I'm trying to say is you have to be a really, really good accountant. If you're talking about a movie like Justice League, where there's more than four hours of music and more than one hour of suites, and all these version numbers and alternatives and this and that. If you don't have your paperwork in order, uh, you're gonna go nuts at the end of it because you don't know where to look to find something. So please keep that in mind for everybody out there that works on a project like this. I hope that answers your question.